worthy of all your all God and glory. You are the blessing right here. Come on, if you know that God is truly worthy. just to die. Is there anybody who can celebrate our King this morning? But truly our God is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. If you're excited about being in the house of our God this morning, won't you put your blessed hands together all over this sanctuary and give our God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. For this is in fact and indeed the day that the Lord has made. And we have come for no other reason than to rejoice and to be glad in it. And I don't know about you, but Lord knows I'm glad to be at Greater Allen Cathedral this morning. Amen. I'm just so glad I made it in the house. Amen. For there is truly no place like this place. And I'm just excited uh, to have the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you this morning uh, during this holiday season. We give honor today to the spirit of the Lord uh, that is in this place. And while we honor God for his spirit, we certainly honor God for our shepherds in the persons of Reverend Dr. Floyd and Elaine Flake. Would you clap your hands and help me honor our leaders this morning? Amen. I am just eternally grateful for the opportunity uh, to be here, and today I just feel like a brand new woman, amen. I just, I'm, I'm grateful to be back in the pulpit this morning. Reverend Lane told me last week that she didn't need me to preach because she was going to give me my entire graduation weekend off, and I told her, thank you, amen. I was excited, but Alan, I want to thank you publicly for praying with me and for me uh, over these last four years. You all have been a part of my journey, and I just want to say thank you this morning for all of your love and support. Amen. Greater things are yet on the horizon. But thank you for being just an amazing people. And I'm just honored to be a part of this place. Amen. Grab your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of Luke chapter number 2, verse 6 through 11. Uh, as we prepare for this holiday season, amen, Reverend Elaine said, aren't you glad that you're having more fun in church than you are the mall? And I've turned over to Reverend T.I.T. and said, yeah, I'm having fun in church first, but I got to go to the mall today. And I'm a little late. I'm a little behind, but all shall be well. Luke chapter 2, amen. But I'm glad you came to church first. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring God here first. Luke chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version of Scripture. If you have it, do me a favor and shout, I got it. If you don't have it, just say, preacher, slow your roll. Amen. Seems we're all there. We, we are iPhone church, y'all. We didn't just upgrade it. Come on here. All right. Luke chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. Let's get serious. New International Version says like this. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in this town of David, a savior has been born. He is the Messiah, 
the Lord. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Gracious God, our eternal Father, it is once more and again that we, your humble servants, come before your holy and your righteous name. This morning, God, before we ask you for anything, we want to take the moment to tell you thank you for everything. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being kind. And now, God, we thank you for being merciful. Now, I pray that you would, in fact, and indeed, hide me behind the shadows of your cross, that the people may only hear, see, and know you in me. I pray now that you'd help me preach to the end that sinners are saved, lives are changed, and the body of Christ is edified. Now, God, we ask for two things, a word that is precise and right. In the name of Jesus, let the people of God shout amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of our God for the time that's been allowed in mind to share. I'd like to preach from this thought, a message from the manger, uh, a message from the manger. My brothers and sisters, as we stop this morning and give thought to the season in which we are in, I have been arrested by the reality that while there are many of us who are in the hustle and bustle of holiday hype and happy, while we are overwhelmed and enamored with sales, sights, and the sounds of holiday cheer, while many of us are overjoyed by the season of saintly celebration, whether Christian or non, celebrating Santa or Jesus, there are some people who face a very different and difficult reality that is probably more realized during this time of year than any other. <clears throat> and that reality is that while this holiday brings the joy of unity, happiness, and family, there are many who suffer with the pain of the lack thereof. While so many of us are gathering together with our closest friends and loved ones, there are others who are yearly burned out by the weight of broken family units, family dysfunction, generational pain, and many other family crises that makes the holidays more difficult to bear than any other time of year. So many people around the world who struggle with not having the right start or background because they are either attached to a family unit that has changed due to death or that of one that exists from the result of abandonment or one that is simply non-existent. I believe that we often get so caught up in assuming that everything is everything for the people we see in and out of these doors every week some who may very well be seated in this sanctuary, who however have a very different reality when they go home to themselves, that they are weighed down by the sting of a bad start. The family, the foundation of one's life, the family, the first point of learning, understanding, and shaping in one's reality, the family, the beginning of our thoughts and our thought processes, our morality and our values. We gather them from this foundation that we call family. You learn how to be a friend through your family. You learn how to share and how to love through your family. You learn how to live and exist through your family. You shape your beliefs and your reasonings, your moral processes, your emotional stability through your family. And when that foundation becomes disrupted, dysfunctional, disillusioned, discombobulated, dismantled, and in some cases dismissed, disappeared, or just downright dismayed, it has the potential to absolutely ruin a growing individual at the core. Truthfully, there are some who are seated in this room this morning who are dealing with the effects of a disrupted start. 
the effects of divorce, the effects of death, the effects of arguments, the effects of abandonment, the effects of abuse, the effects of alcoholism and domestic violence, the effects of being raised in a single parent home or a non-parent home, being raised by a grandmother because mama wasn't around, the effects of a father who walked away. So many people are challenged by this idea of family and haunted by the ghost of situations past. So many of us who struggle weakly with our own inner selves about what it means to have a lack in this foundation. So many individuals who are living in a way that is reflective of the residual of a broken start. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Settling for situations that are clearly beneath you. Allowing a man or a woman to violate your humanity and dictate your destiny. Living in bitterness and unforgiveness. Unwilling to love and unable to love properly. Dealing with the residual of a broken start. The family, the first idea of our own self-awareness and self-significance, and some of us to this day, whether you admit it or not, are still struggling with these very ideas because they weren't first fostered in our family. Some of you who are here are listening to this message, and I believe that you can identify with what it means to have a bad start. And think it not strange that the enemy attacks the family unit because it is the goal of the enemy to hinder the forthcoming of greatness. The disruption of the family can create permanent and irrevocable life change and damage that have the potential to either make or break an individual. But can I just pause parenthetically to challenge my entire church to understand and believe with me that in 2018, my goal and my intention is to lift up family units across this nation and keep them on the altar of my heart in intercession because I bind the hand of the enemy that seeks to destroy and dismantle family units because the devil desires to do irrevocable damage. I am praying for every child that is the product of a divorce. I'm praying for every single mother and every single father who has experienced a life shift because somebody backed away. I'm praying for that husband and that wife who's been tempted to walk away from their marriage. I am lifting up the family unit because truthfully speaking, the restoration of the family unit can shift the entire trajectory of a culture and a nation. Mass incarceration statistics would change when black folk get it together. Can I tell you, when families come back together, the number of people in the hood without jobs and without education would change when the family gets back together. The number of suicides would change when the family gets back together. The number of children murdered unjustly by police would change when the family gets back together. Because if we can just give children a proper foundation, their lives will forever be possessed position for greatness. In fact, it was the 11th president of a country of India by the name of APJ Abdul Kalam who once said that if a country uh, is to be corruption free and become a nation of beautiful minds, I strongly feel that there are three key societal members who can make a difference. They are the father, the mother, and the teacher, suggesting to us that those initial relationships are key to the lives of success. And the truth of the matter is, I believe that there may very well be somebody seated in this sanctuary this morning who can testify that they are only here and in their right mind because God sent a backup plan when your foundation failed. He sent you somebody to hold you and keep your mind together. Whether it was a teacher, a grandmother, a mentor, somebody who helped rear you when you could have uh, lost your mind. And today I'm just wondering if there's anybody here who can simply thank God for an open door. Somebody who can tell God thank you that your best friend's family took you in. That your auntie and your uncle tried to set a good example that you are in your right frame of mind because when your foundation failed God sent a backup plan when I didn't have a strong start God sent me somebody to set me straight before I lost my mind it wasn't my own family but I thank God that he had somebody in the background to help me get to where I need to be today is there anybody here who can bless God for an open door your grandmama stepped in your grandfather your mentor 
mentor, your teacher, somebody intervene before you lost your mind because of your bad start. But what about those who are still suffering, Reverend Elaine? What about those who are living in the residual of a shaky start? What about those who have yet to be delivered from the heartbreak of their background? What about those, Stephanie, who didn't have someone to save them in time and they are just wandering lonely trying to figure out this thing called life, wishing that God had birthed them into a different start? What about those who are simply stuck in feeling like they were born under bad circumstances? Well, he here is a message of hope in this age old story about this man named Jesus Christ. God, I feel good this morning. The story of Jesus gives us hope today that no matter where or what you've come from, you are not here by incident nor accident and you are not defined by the circumstances surrounding your birth. God, I wish somebody would bless God right there. You are not defined by what you were born into. There is a message from the manger that can help us all to remember and believe that God has a way of taking strange starts and making them great finishes. That God himself specializes in working with shaky starts. I have three things that this text shows us about this message from the manger. I'm going to give them to you and get out of your way because as we examine the story of the birth of Jesus Christ himself, he is the son of God. Uh, God being very God understood that he had to part him Himself and become flesh for the gospel of John bears witness to us that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh so God chooses now this pure catalyst to become a vehicle by which he would send his son to this place called earth Mary is chosen to carry this miracle Joseph is chosen to be married this virgin's husband and he decided y'all not to walk away in the midst of this unexplainable situation they are traveling to Bethlehem to register for the census that was called by Caesar and while they were there there came a time for the baby to be born now Here's the first circumstance. They are traveling and the baby decides it's his time to come. They are in the midst of an unexpected birthing situation. So now they are focused on trying to figure out what to do to have this baby. They are searching and searching and they find no place. So the Bible says that she gave birth to him in a manger because there was no room available for them. This is, y'all, a bad situation. It's a bad circumstance. I've never given birth to a child but I promise you I got enough sense to understand you don't want to be having a child while you traveling and you sure don't want to have a child when there's no room in the end y'all she's about to give birth to a child where there, there is no real room and for some of us our struggle has been similar to that of this young unwed mother and somewhat unafraid mother and the struggle of her forthcoming child that our start and our foundation seem to be happening in unfit spaces and today I believe that there may very well be somebody who is suffering with being born in what they feel was an unfit situation here's the first message from the manger and to all who are struggling to find space in this thing um, that we call life after having a not so strong start you've been wondering how God can pick up the pieces of your life and use you in spite of where you come from well there's a message from the manger here's the first message that when purpose is imminent provision is definite can I say it again when there is purpose purpose on your life that is imminent provision is definite watch how God works y'all this mother couldn't find a proper place to have a child they were searching and searching we all know the story there was yet no room in the end but what we witness now is that there was no room but God gave her place God have mercy y'all gonna catch it on the way home there was not a room but God gave her a place the place now was a manger it wasn't ideal but it was a place it wasn't befitting but it was a place it was not comfortable but it was a place it wasn't the best circumstance but it was a place not only is it the place where she birthed him but it was also the place where the people came to see him which indicates to us that when you have promise on your life God will provide for you wherever he plants you. I wish somebody 
would catch this message that there is no place that is so difficult that he cannot meet you with divine provision for your placement and I know that God's got a purpose for you because you're here I know that God's got purpose on your life because after everything you've been through you're still seated in this sanctuary this morning you are not here by incident nor accident life has not been easy but you're still here in fact would you just look over at somebody tap them on the shoulder tell them neighbor I know you got purpose because you're still here God is not through with you yet so while some of us are struggling with where we have landed and where we are standing, I have come with a message this morning to tell you that God has not forgotten about you. That sometimes God will bless you right where you are standing. It's not where you want to be, but it's a place. It's not ideal, but it's a place. It may not be the place you want to be, but I promise you God's got provision for your placement. Meaning it may not be what you wanted, but he will provide for you while you're there in fact God will use where you're standing to become the very place that you needed to be Mary turned a manger into a delivery room because God has a way of using where you are to cause it to work for you even when it isn't where you want to be because all things have to work together for the good I can't hear nobody of them that love the Lord she turned a manger into a delivery room can I tell you that you can turn your bad circumstance into your next blessing you got the power as long as you got purpose on your life to turn right where you are into the place of your victory can I tell you this morning I thank God that where there was no room he gave me place where there was no trail he made one I don't know how but some kind of way I am here everything around me just started working for me I didn't feel like I was in the right spot but it started working for me it didn't always feel comfortable but it was working for me I didn't want to do it but it was working for me is there anybody here who can shout because where you are is just working for you would you touch somebody on your left and your right and say neighbor it might not be comfortable but it's working for me Hey, God's about to make it work for you. I really just came to prophesy over about 300 of y'all who will receive it. That I believe right where you are, God's about to make it work for you. In fact, you ought to just prophesy it over yourself. Lay your hands on yourself and declare, I may not be where I want to be, but I believe God's about to make it work for me. He's about to turn my situation into my next miracle. Tell somebody. It's about to work for me, yeah. It's about to work for me. It's not comfortable, but it's about to work. Y'all, not only that, watch this. God will provide for you because there's purpose on you. But not only is there purpose on your life, um, despite your circumstances of your start, y'all, there's still a reason to rejoice under the circumstances. When the Bible says that there were shepherds who were living in the field nearby. They were keeping watch over the flock. The angel appeared to them, told them, do not be afraid. <laughs> I bring you good news. And for some of you today, you are simply here for me to announce this angelic proclamation over your life. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news. And the good news for you today is that there is still good news coming out of bad places. God have mercy. Watch this. Here's a baby and his mother who are in an experience of the start of this child's life. From the forefront it seemed like Jesus was born in unfit places. For Mary in this place, she needs the strength of the word to keep her. She was carrying the son of the living God a king, a messiah yet the best place that God could provide was a manger. A manger is a place that is fit for animals. It's a stall, a stable designed to protect the animals and the livestock. This isn't the place fit for a king to be born. I can only imagine that Mary is thinking, I thought I was carrying the king of the world and I all could only give him a manger. He was born in a bare space but y'all he was still born under divine purpose and be because he was born and because there was enough uh, room for them there heaven had to declare good news from a bad place and all I really come to show you in this message from the manger is that God is still in the business of producing good news in bad places would you just shake hands with your neighbor and just shout neighbor 
God is still producing good news in bad places. You may be here this morning and feel like you're at the end of your rope. You may be feeling broken in your mind. You may be feeling like you didn't come from the right credentials or the right background. Maybe your family couldn't put you through Harvard, but Lord knows he provided a way for you to put yourself through community college. God is still producing good news from bad places. And I've just come to tell you that regardless of your circumstance, there is still something good coming out of your life because you are here you made it despite your circumstance you are a living witness of what it means to defeat and beat the odds you don't have to be a product of your environment he was born in the manger but lord knows he surely wasn't the least of them can i tell you that you are the good news that there's still good things coming out of bad places i dare you just look at yourself look at how far he He's bought you. There is still good news coming out of bad places. Some of us were born in the worst of situations. But look how God picked you up and turned you around. There is still good news coming out of bad places. In fact, because you are the good news, I dare you declare about three people on your own. Neighbor, if you didn't believe it before you got here, you better believe now that God's still producing good news in bad places. Because when you take a look at me, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You're looking at a young lady who was born on Biddle and Luzerne in the heart of East Baltimore. I watch young people get killed right in front of my face. But now I'm standing behind a pulpit because God is still producing good news in bad places. And I believe that if I gave you the microphone this morning, you would be able to testify that God turned something around in your life. And you are a living witness that he He's still producing good news. Would you just grab somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you needed some encouragement this morning, I'm here to declare to you that I'm beating the odds. That if you only knew what I came from, if you only knew how broken I could have been, if you only knew how I should have lost my mind, if you only knew what happened to me, if you only knew what my mama and daddy did, you would understand that God is still producing good news in bad places. I was born in something that could have wiped me out, but I thank God. God, that I'm still here in my right mind because God is still producing good news in bad places. I'm on my way out of here, y'all. But not only will God give you provision, not only is he still giving good news, but the final message from the major is this. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord announced to the shepherd that there was good news and the good news to day was this that in this town a savior has been born and he is the messiah can i just get the whole church to shout out he is the messiah the messiah now was born in a manger he was born under extreme conditions he was born in shaky circumstance but guess what y'all his circumstance did not define his purpose but rather his purpose defied his circumstance and there is a message that's coming from the manger for us today because while the announcement from heaven was that the messiah had come the people were rejoicing and celebrating the glory of the prophecy being fulfilled but when we look at the prophecy of the coming of Jesus the Bible says to us that God told the woman in the book of Genesis that I will put enmity between you and the woman that he will crush your head and he will strike his heel there is a prophetic utterance about the seed of the woman crushing the head of the enemy God told Satan that he was putting enmity between them he prophesied that there was one that would come that would crush the head of the devil so while there was a glory that was there about his birth there was also a gloom that was there about his death that one day the same king 
would die on a cross to crush the head of the enemy so the good news was this that the Messiah had come but the reality was that he came just to die but there is a message this morning in the way he was born in the way that he lived in the way that he died they're speaking to us today because the Messiah he was born in a manger he rode on a donkey he hung on a cross he was buried in a borrowed tomb but on the third day he rose from the grave and now he is seated on the throne so the message from the manger is that how you start doesn't have to determine how you finish good evening y'all I'm on my way out of here but I wish I had somebody who could bless God this morning because how you start doesn't have to determine how you finish because God is still specializing in taking shaky start and turning them into miracles and I just came to talk to somebody who could bless God today because how you were born doesn't have to determine how you live but when God's got something on your life you understand that it has to come to pass would you do me a favor encourage three people around you grab them by the hand and tell them neighbor I don't know what your start look like but I came to tell you that your finish looks greater than your beginning you've been hurt you've been suffering you have cried you've lived with it long enough but today the message from the major is that the curse over your life can be broken because where you began doesn't have to determine where you end he was born in a manger but now he's seated 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 he's seated on the throne so I bless God and I praise God I honor him I glorify him because he's seated on that throne he's making intercession for me and you to make sure that our start doesn't define how we finish would you thank God that despite how you begin all is well all is well all is well grab somebody by the hand tell them neighbor everything is gonna be all right it doesn't matter where you be it doesn't matter what you be it doesn't matter where you come from god will turn it turn it turn it turn it turn it turn it yes he will if you're glad that one day god picked you up turned you around place your feet on solid ground i dare you bless him bless him bless him because it could be worse bless him say it say it say it you ought to bless him every time i think about what i could have been i gotta bless him for what i am today i might not be everything that i want to be but i thank god i'm not what i could be i thank god that he kept my mind i thank god that he kept my heart i thank god that he kept my body if you know it shout yes It could have been another way. 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 It could
another way. It could have been 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 another way. But he's seen it. He's seen it. He's seen it. Tell a neighbor if you only knew what could have happened to me. Woo, God. If you only knew what I should have been based on my circumstance. Hey, I'm only here today because God specializes in taking shaky starts and turning them into royal finishes. Hey, hallelujah. I mean, watch this. Today, and today, I feel the mandate of prayer on my life. Those of you who are here, who are unashamed to admit, preacher, I've been struggling with the residual of a shaky start. Meet me at this altar, meet me here, come on. Preacher, I, I've been struggling with the residual of a shaky start. The struggle with my family, the pain in my past, things that I've been through. Meet me here at this altar. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Come on. All over this sanctuary. You say, preacher, not only have I been living in the residual, not only have I been struggling with the, the residual of a shaky start, but, but I've been living under the, the weight of family dysfunction. I've been living under the weight of pain, guilt, and shame from the circumstances by which I was born into. Today I'm praying specifically for you, wherever you are. Be unashamed today. There is healing for your broken heart. Hallelujah. He's seated on the right hand of God. He is our savior and his name is Jesus. <laughs> Emmanuel, God who is with us. He's seated there. And he's interceding for you, 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 and you. He, he's interceding for you. He's interceding for you. All over this building, wherever you are, I'm waiting for you. 
said, Preacher, I've been struggling. It didn't start right, but I thank God that today I'm leaving here believing he could take a shaky star, turn it into a royal finish. Hallelujah. Born in a manger, rode on a donkey, died on a piece of wood, buried in a tomb that didn't belong to him. Some kind of way God turned that thing around. Now he's seated on a throne. How you start does not have to define how you finish. God specializes in flipping the script. He can rewrite that thing for you. He can move that thing for you. He can change that thing for you. He can cause all of these things to work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Right here, for those of you who are seated in the, the pews, would you just stretch your hands towards those who are here? Those who are at this altar, would you grab hands with the person you're seated, standing, kneeling beside, touch somebody on their shoulder. Everybody touch somebody this morning. Right here, I wanna pray for these individuals who's struggling with the weight of this, this time, this season. Today, you're gonna be free. I, I declare it over your life. And all the weight you've been living under freedom is here for you today father in the name of jesus we thank you lord god for each and every one of these individuals who had the holy ghost boldness the audacity to break the curse the pain the weight over their lives today god i thank you for their boldness to step forward and say you know what i want to be healed today you said oh god if we ask it in your name that it shall be given to us so today god we ask for you to send healing in this room healing for every broken heart healing for every broken mind healing for every broken family unit healing even for those who decided that it wasn't their day to walk god we pray today for everybody who's assembled here in this room who's been struggling with the residual of a shaky start god somebody here today has been struggling with the weight of family dysfunction and family hurt and pain and guilt and shame generational curses but today i declare that the curse is broken over their lives i bind the hand of the enemy where he is i bind out Alcoholism. I bind addiction to pornography. I bind all manners of domestic abuse and violence. I bind the spirit of divorce. I bind it off of your people right now. Oh God, I declare over these people that they are healed, they are well, they are successful, that you're turning their lives around, that you're using their pain to produce a pressure that's going to make a diamond, that after we've been tried in the fire, that they're coming out of spirit gold. Oh God, I thank you today because you have the ability to exchange to us beauty for our ashes today God give us that beauty hell God today we pray for that young lady who is struggling with the weight of abuse and molestation and abortion and miscarriage and rape and all manners of violence oh God we pray for that man who is struggling with the same oh God right now in the name of Jesus I declare that the enemy will not have their mind he will not have their homes. He will not have their bodies. God, I lift up every marriage before you right now. Oh God, those who are struggling to stay together. I pray, oh God, that you now would step into the room. That, oh God, whatever the circumstances are, that you would turn it around for that home. I pray for every child who is suffering with the weight of divorce. Oh God, that I pray now that you would turn them into a success despite their circumstance. I thank you, God. Because you still specialize in taking shaky starts, making the royal finishes. Today, God, we declare we're going to finish strong. Today, we're leaving here with new faith, new understanding, new perspective. And you have a plan for our lives. So today, God, we tell you thank you. Because we believe by faith that even as we rise from this altar, that we are healed by the power in your word. If you believe it, rise to your feet. Give God a hallelujah praise. A hallelujah praise. Healing for your spirit. Come on, lift it up all the way. There's shelter from the rain. There's shelter from the Sing it. 
this morning I want you to know there's healing for your soul the ministers are coming the ministers are moving if you're here this morning and you say preacher I need some more healing I need healing for my soul I've tried to heal my body too many times I've tried to heal my broken heart and none of it works today what I need is healing for my soul I want to let you know that that healing came over 2,000 years ago and his name is Jesus Christ and today he's come to give you healing for your soul so if you hear me you say preacher I want this kind of healing I need a relationship with this man named Jesus Christ would you do me a favor would you step out of your seat wherever you are make your way to this the Lord's altar if you're in the balcony we'll wait for you if you're on the mezzanine if you're on this level we'll wait for you come on clap your hands there's healing for your soul this morning Healing for, healing for your soul this morning. You can't play for the ball away on your own. Look at two or three people, look them in the face. Ask them, neighbor, are you in need of this type of healing? Do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? The one who is able to take your shaky start and turn it into a royal finish. If you say, preacher, this is me, I need healing for my soul. Come on, ask two or three people. Ask them, neighbor, are you saved and are you sure? Come on, this healing for your soul. If they say, no, I'm not saved, no, I'm not sure, tell them, neighbor, I'll walk with you. Today is your day. Don't you leave here this Sunday. Today is your day. God wants to heal your soul. He wants to heal your soul. Come on, listen. We're going to wait 60 more seconds. If you're in the room and you're in need of salvation, you're in need of healing for your soul, we're waiting for you at this altar. We just want to receive you. We want to pray with you. We want to lead you into the way of salvation. Whoever you are, my brother, my sister, there's healing. Come on, hallelujah. It's never too late, y'all.